As you said, my name is Catherine Halden and I lead our data analytics and AI work at Tech UK. For those of you that maybe haven't come across Tech UK, we are the largest technology trade association here in the UK. And I am delighted to be also be the moderator for this session, uh, which as Pula mentioned, is all around focusing on the challenges of digital innovation, but also if we have time in the, in the 30 minute set, also looking at some of the solutions and next steps in, in this area. And so I have a brilliant panel who I will get to introduce themselves in turn. Uh, maybe to begin with, Steve, would you mind just introducing a little bit about yourself and your organization? Yes, thank you, Catherine. And uh, good day to everybody, whatever time it is in your part of the world. Um, my name is Steve Grundling and I represent uh, the Arc Services. We're an integration services business based down in South Africa. Um, and we've been a WSO2 partner for I think, about seven or eight years now. Um, and yeah, really grateful to be on the panel and, and really interesting uh, topic challenges in digital innovation. I think uh, we'll need a lot more than half an hour, but uh, I think that's all, all we've got for the day. Excellent. Thank you, Steve. Great to have you with us today. Vince, would you mind introducing yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Vince Blogg. I'm the Director of Technology for Chakray in the UK. Um, Chakray is a platinum partner with WSO2, and we've been a partner since 2013. We've got offices in the UK, Spain, Mexico, <coughs> Sri Lanka, and Canada, and we probably have around 70 plus customers spread across the WSO2 technology stack, spread across the globe and spread across industry. We're uh, an agnostic provider of services. Um, so we help companies with everything from product selection, uh, strategy, delivery and development of integration capability. But our niche in the market is in integration. And my role is I'm responsible for delivery, the people that do delivery, the technologies we deploy, the methodologies we use, the architecture and standards we work to, and how we support customers in managed services engagements. And that's me. Fantastic. Thank you, Vince. Great global representation there by the sounds of it. Uh, so look forward to uh, diving into some of those issues in a bit more detail. Uh, Frederick, over to you, uh, if you could introduce yourself and a bit about your company. Thanks, Catherine. So, hello everybody. My name is Fredrik Sanson. I am broadcasting from beautiful Sweden today. Uh, I am the CBDO of a company called Red Pill Impro. We are the largest provider of open source related services and products here in Scandinavia, with offices in Sweden, Norway and Denmark. Uh, as CBDO, I support all our offices with business development related to what we do within our various solution areas. The main one is, of course, API and integration with connectivity, but we also work a lot with DevOps and cloud-related uh, services. Uh, I'm also one of the co-founders of this company, so I've been working here for a long time, since, all the way since 2003, and we are partners of WSO2 since 2012. Excellent. Thank you, Frederick. And maybe sticking with you for the moment, we'll dive straight into, into the discussion, I think. Um, from your perspective, what are some of the kind of the key challenges of digital innovation? Well, there are many challenges with digital innovation, of course, but one I would like to highlight is uh, making sure that every initiative you are running gets proper management backing. And, and why is that then? Well, because as I see it, all digital innovation projects, or basically all digitization of the day is, sort of involves the whole company. Digitization is not pro purely a tech or IT project anymore. When you work with business development, when you implement new processes, methods, or whatever you do, uh, engage with new partners or customers, it's always dig a digital element involved in that. And that requires uh, that you view digitization or IT as a core business or part or core to your business. And you also have to recognize that digital transformation project is a change or transformation project, not an IT project. Bringing in the right IT or digital capability is only part of the puzzle. You need to make sure that you align your initiative with the vision of the business. You may need to make sure that you have uh, sufficient change driving capability in place. You need to make sure that the business change in relation to all the new tooling you add and to, to sort of get the effects of that. And you also need to make sure that you have proper management backing for all the initiatives you drive. In fact, I read a, a recent report where a, a company asked 1,000 
IT decision makers all over the world, which was the most important in, uh, thing to make their initiative uh, successful. And 90% of them also the management backing. So that is really a true uh, factor, a key factor in that. And, and one evidence of that is, of course, the Bezos Manifesto that was launched in 2002, relating back to connectivity and APIs, where uh, Jeff Bezos uh, is supposed to have said that everything should be an API, and if, it, and if anyone does anything that's not an API, he, should, he or she should be fired. And everyone knows who Jeff Bezos is today and what his company does. So there's maybe something there. Very interesting. Thank you, Frederick, for those opening remarks. Vince, anything you'd like to, you know, either comment on from what Frederick said, but also your own your own views and your own perspective on some of the key challenges to digital innovation? So I think I'd, I'd, I'd echo some of his points. I think a lack of a lack of empowerment or motivation in the organisation, a lack of a strategy for innovation are, are key challenges. I think another big one is success. I think success in an organisation, um, what, you, what you've done for a long time, that it works, often leads organisations to be kind of intransient to change. Um, and I think when you talk about innovation and, you know, transformation, it's it, it, it's getting the, 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 the foundations in place. Um, a lot of the organizations we work with, I think, are predominantly playing catch up rather than actually innovating. They're in lots of digital projects, but um, <clears throat> not truly innovating. Um, and lots of organizations need to get that catch up done quickly. And what I mean by that is, you know, getting the foundations for integration, for data, for APIs properly embedded into the organization. Um, and there are lots of organizations out there right now who are wrestling with that. Um, and I think sort of uh, another area is I identifying the opportunity for innovation in the organization. Um, so, you know, what makes you competitive? Where are the opportunities to innovate within the organization? It's not just about technology. And some people think they're innovating just because they're using an innovative technology. Um, it's about when innovation changes your business or changes the way you do business. And I think there's some, probably some good examples out there of organizations that are able to do that. One that comes to mind is Vitality Health. Um, they've been um, able to provide very innovative services to their customers. And a lot of that is underpinned by IT and cost of IT and how they've driven down cost of IT to enable them to do this. But another aspect of that is the relationships they've built with other organizations. But I'll pause there and, and, and let Steve jump in. Excellent, thank you, Vince. Yes, Steve, over to you. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> I told myself, don't make that mistake. Um, yeah, just to uh, echo what the guys have both said, um, you know, really spot on. Um, picking up a little bit from the sort of direction that Vince was taking, um, I think that, you know, you've chosen two really big words to say, have a little chit chat about digital and innovation. Uh, I mean, you could take each on their own. And, you know, I mean, there are, there are books and university courses uh, on each. Um, and I think that's part of the problem. So, um, and Vince was, was touching on it. Um, you know, not all innovation is digital, even today, uh, and not all digital projects constitute innovation. Um, and you know, I liked uh, Clayton Christensen's uh, uh, books on the topic. Um, uh, he wrote Innovator's Dilemma and Innovator's Solution. Uh, I think they're quite commonly read or quite well read. Um, it, but in terms of framing it, I think you know, he spoke about uh, uh, sustaining innovation versus disruptive innovation and and i think that you know hooks into what, what vince was saying um and 
And in fact, even recently, I see a, a, I saw a paper from McKinsey and Company uh, called "The Top Trends in Tech," and they're using that exact language as well. So it remains valid. I think Christensen wrote that uh, stuff quite a long time ago. Um, and you know, many established businesses uh, have a really hard time creating disruptive innovations. It's almost, and again, to Vin's point, it's almost counter uh, to their businesses because you become a victim of your own of your own success and even size. But then new entrants themselves struggle because they often target sustaining innovations and that basically means they've almost lost out the uh, you know off the bat because the established players you know nine times out of ten will win with with sustaining innovations um so i think that, that's something we've got to be cautious of when we look at those two words if i go to the word digital um you know, Frederick touched on it, but I think the days are past where we think that uh, there's this concept of the business and, and IT, and we need to try and uh, convince the business about IT. I don't think CEOs are confused. They know their businesses are about digital, yeah, and and everything's an API, and, and therefore everything's about uh, um, integration at the end of the day. I think if you're in this conference, Odds are you, especially in an integration conference, odds are you're, you're in IT. I'd be surprised that there are that many people attending today that aren't in the IT industry. Um, so the first thing I'd like to say is, well, welcome. Uh, in fact, what are you doing? Don't you have a Jira board full of things to do? Or are you doing sitting in a conference listening to us <laughs> talk nonsense? But um, they, they, uh, it, it then takes us into, so people are not confused about the importance of, uh, of digital. But... We do have challenges, and I have my colleagues speak about uh, about the yuppies and IT being a fashion industry, um, and and so the tech is not really that much the issue. There's a lot of great tech out there. Um, you know, we need big picture views. We need enterprise architecture. The execution skills are a challenge because IT is so pervasive now that uh, there is a dearth of uh, of IT skills. We certainly struggle to to find that, um, and and technology isn't in itself. Um, a silver bullet. And I have a feeling my uh, colleagues are going to bring up the topic of data in a minute as well, because a lot of challenges uh, revolve around uh, around data. Absolutely. Thank you, Steve, for your introduction. And for all of you, for your introductory remarks there, I think we've introduced a real broad church of different uh, challenges in this space, and maybe we can delve into a few of them in a bit more detail. Maybe, Frederick, if I could come to you now just to talk a little bit more about some of the points Steve mentioned there around integration. Yeah, Steve mentioned both integration as being important for innovation and also data, of course, access to data. And I, I agree to that. I mean, one of the most important things when trying to establish the foundation to be innovative, I think, these days is to enable access to data. Uh, because there are a lot of information available there. And I think to start with, we need to, to move our, our, our organizations from what I would like to call the app-centric way of doing things. It used to be that whenever we want to do innovation, we wanted to add the functionality, let's create an app for that, let's create an app for that, let's create an app for that, which created a lot of um, different apps that we needed to maintain and develop and also to integrate, of course. I think we should try to look at it from another perspective, that is a data-centric approach instead. So let's, let's try to use the technology that are, is provided, for instance, by WS02, to create a digital backbone where access to data is, is, is easy for developers and for, 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 for the business, basically. Uh, and the way to do that, of course, is to do it through APIs. So if you can create an API that gives you access to data, that will also give you access to possibility, the possibility of innovation, I think. So uh, apps, uh, from app-centric to data-centric, I think is important. And connectivity is an important part of the answer on how do we become digitally innovative. Thank you, Frederick. Yeah, Vince, your, your thoughts, your comments? I, I, I think what Frederick's saying on uh, a digital backbone is, is, is crucial. That there, there are people out there who are talking, you know, uh, data centric or, or moving away from app centric but what what they're actually doing is is building building digital apis outside of a digital backbone not understanding that the, the the necessity of that backbone and that and that capability so i think there's a lot of enterprises getting in a mess r rushing to do digital rushing to expose APIs on endpoint systems, 
so that they can enable a digital project, but not actually focusing on the uh, the ground root stuff in terms of building a proper backbone um, with layered sets of APIs that support these uh, these projects and 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 this ability to innovate within the organisation, getting a handle on your data models, uh, building your business data model, the, the, the things that people overlook when they when they attack this because they're in a hurry to play catch up on the industry and they should be in a hurry but this this is you know this is uh, not not that difficult to do it just happens to be an industry that is you know people associate with a lot of pain of you know historic failed projects in integration and systems integration you know, most IT directors will be able to tell you a story of something that went wrong and they associate it with this space. But the market's changed and the technologies have changed in the market. And I think that's one of the, you know, as we get on to, you know, what, what, what's the light at the end of the tunnel that we can that we can cover there collectively? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Vince. Steve, any reflections on some of the points your your colleagues have mentioned here? Yeah, I, I certainly agree with what Vince just said. And, um, you know, I don't think that, uh, you know, we're not suffering from uh, bad technology. That's not a reason why, uh, you know, we might be struggling with, uh, with digital innovation. And we touched on the on, on key points earlier. And I also think, uh, um, you know, I like to reflect on Gartner's, uh, I think most people are probably familiar with their, Pace layered uh, application strategy. They spoke years ago, it might even be 10 years or more, about, uh, if I can get it right, uh, systems of uh, record, uh, systems of differentiation, and systems of innovation. And um, the cool thing for us in the integration uh, industry is that a key component of that, uh, that architecture is this, they call it connective tissue. And, and, you know, essentially we are the connective tissue of that. It's also you know, about knowing what to do with a system of record and how to treat that. And, and, and those points we're making about data earlier uh, as you go up the stack. But, um, you know, Vince mentioned uh, uh, vitality. Um, you know, uh, down in South Africa, um, another example, you know, we work with uh, a digital bank, uh, time bank and we're seeing so much of this because this connective tissue is actually happening intra-organization now so that is you know key to this whole innovation thing um, many businesses are innovating through their partnerships with with other businesses that's exactly what vitality does um, uh, time bank doesn't have a branch but uh, they have kiosks in every single pick and pay and now in the in the Fashini group which is a clothing retailer in South Africa as well and so that connective tissue happens between different uh, uh, business entities. Technology like WSO2 enables all of this. And now we've got uh, you know, all the additional componentry in terms of cloud and containers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I, we really are in, a, in an absolute sweet spot um, as far as this is concerned. Thank you, Steve. It's good also as we transition to maybe the more optimistic part of this conversation. Uh, I know we've obviously spent the first 20 minutes talking about some of the challenges, but maybe Vince, if I could come to you now just to maybe get your reflections on, I guess, what are the solutions, as you mentioned as part of your opening remarks, what are the light at the end of the tunnel? How can we, how can we resolve some of these quite gritty issues we've been discussing this afternoon? Well, so uh, at risk of stating the obvious, we if if people are watching this and are on the fence it, it's kind of get get table stakes done table stakes at the party means you 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 need to be able to integrate or you need to understand what it means strategically to you you know that may mean you are speaking to you know one of the organizations on this panel about providing capability it may mean that integration is really important to you competitively and that you need to develop a capability and and you know in the, in the same way the organizations at this table are, are people that can can help you with that but but getting table stakes done is is this is the starting point and i think for a lot of cios or it directors out there that might mean a little bit of a change in mindset this this isn't as difficult as history might inform you 
um, and um, the market has changed. Um, the uh, the technology is continually being being democratizing over the last 20 years. Um, you know, integration was probably solved 20, 30 years ago, but it was difficult to do. It's got easier to do. Um, and there are products out there for every every price point in the market. So it's not just an enterprise or a big business activity anymore. It's a mid-market activity. Um, everybody can do integration. And a lot of the technology out there helps with getting to the table stakes, you know, c completed stage. Um, and, you know, obviously, obviously WSO2 is, is one of those technologies out there. Um, so I, I, I think that believing it can be done um, and, you know, get, get, getting going with it is, is, is crucial. And then it's about understanding where it fits strategically and looking into your organization about where you're competitive and where integration can uh, uh, or, or, or a capability around integration and APIs can make you more competitive as an organization because it opens up new relationships, new opportunities uh, or new ways to use data. But I'll, I'll pause again and let the other guys chime in. Thank you, Vince. And now it's very encouraging to hear there's a level of maturity with our solutions to some of these challenges evolving over time. So uh, that's that's excellent news. Very encouraging. Um, Frederick, could I maybe hand over to you? What, what do you think some of the solutions? Yeah, I would like to go back to what I said about app centric versus data centric. And, and um, Vince is right. I mean, uh, having a state of the art uh, API slash integration capability is one part of, of, of being able to digitally innovate. I mean, there's a lot of talk in this forum about the APIs and integration. And of course, that's only one part of digital innovation. But I would like to emphasize that I think it's a very important part uh, to be able to exchange data with your various systems in an efficient way. Uh, that makes it easy for you to uh, build a new mobile app once the, your competitor creates a really good mobile app. You can face that threat within a couple of weeks if you have access to the data you need through APIs. You can modify your systems to, to sort of release new uh, offerings or whatever your business is up to. And I mean, uh, in our organization, we also try to speak to the, the really top level management about this and the uh, importance of a, a digital backbone and, and, and making data available. And we try to do a, a comparison with the uh, power grid network. I mean, back in the days when, when, when power was distributed from through the net, uh, everybody had, had their separate cords. So you had to have a lot of sort of a, a specific cord to attach to the power grid for each specific unit you wanted to use. Imagine if that would have been the case today. Uh, whenever you want created a lamp or when you wanted to charge your computer, you would have had to, had, uh, had to call the, the power grid or, or the, the power supplier and ask them for a plugin to, to provide that. Uh, if, you, if you look at data the same way, that if, if, you, if you look at data and if data is always available like from, from core in, in, in the wall, basically, it's very easy to work with digital innovation because data will be available when you need it to digitally innovate. So I would like to say that the solution is try to create a digital backbone that makes it creates easy access to data uh, that will make also free up resources that you used to put on building integrations instead of enabling access to data. Uh, and make sure that you have management backing for whatever you do within digitization. Good points there. Thank you, Frederick. Steve, your, your thoughts on some of the, the solutions to these challenges? Yeah, so exciting time. Um, and um, uh, I was reading about uh, the fact that I think it was uh, uh, one of the founders of uh, the Singularity University who said that uh, in the next 10 years, we're going to experience more progress than we have in the in the past 100 years. So, you know, we are in the midst of this thing. And, and the reason I'm harping on that is, um, and I'm using words like enterprise architecture, but it's about the people that understand, you know, what it is that they're doing. Is it an innovation? Is it a digitization? What's the difference? Um, 
Uh, is it tech for the sake of tech or actually do we know what it is that we're doing and is it uh, um, coherent with organization strategy as I think Vince was talking about earlier? So I guess with all this noise that goes on and, this, and, and, and complexity and you're trying to combine these concepts of innovation and, 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 and digital, um, the amount of tools that we've got. And I think IT industry has always been known as a, um, uh, a fashion industry. And now more than ever, we've got uh, uh, tech stuff happening. And so you need those people that can help you make sense of this stuff and enable what's necessary to be enabled. So um, to retain a system of record, uh, which is doing a great job and protect it and look after it in terms of its data integrity and leverage it through APIs, whether that's through innovations that you create internally through a mobile app, for example, like the guys are talking about, or whether it's through partnering with a, a, a delivery business or a, a third-party entity uh, to enable some of the customer service, you know, understanding all of those things and how to hook them all together is, is so important. So I think that that language thing and the yuppie nature of uh, the IT sector our, our shortage of skills, you, you need the guys that can distill it and make sense of it for you, or it can be a bit of a minefield. Absolutely. Some really good, some really good tips there. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we are very quickly drawing to the end of this half an hour session. I don't know about you, but it has absolutely flown by the last half an hour. Um, but maybe uh, just to sort of finish things off, um, maybe again, coming to Vince, you first. Um, would be good to get any kind of final thoughts, any final reflections on this on this panel. Any putting you slightly on the spot, but if you've got any, I guess, uh, sort of key takeaways for a final key takeaway for the audience, that would be excellent. Oh, I think you're on mute. Sorry, everyone's made the mistake now. I think I think believe what people have to believe that they can that they can a, a achieve this in their organization and but believing means what Frederick was saying coming coming back to management backing looking for uh, people to be enabled to innovate within the organization and challenge the way that the organization is working the the the, the foundational parts are, are, are just about good discipline and building capability in your organization but innovation comes from your people and comes from a mindset comes from a you know building an innovation culture you know pixar pixar don't have a specific team that comes up with their stories it comes from the employees in the organization they write the the ideas for the next film and i think organizations need to look to their people to write the ideas for innovation and it needs to be diverse you know the pool that that comes from needs to be diverse within the organization because you know even the guy that's 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 packing the the product in the in the warehouse has has something to bring to the table in terms of potential to innovate in the organization it's not just an it imperative and it's not just something that sits within your r d function as an organization so yeah, that's my that's my closing thoughts, I guess. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point. I'm pleased we brought that into the conversation. So thank you, Vince. Um, Steve, I'll come to you next. Any kind of closing thoughts, closing remarks, based on the conversation we've had today? I'd say to you, if if tech has become, you know, the centre of business, and I think it has, uh, then integration is the centre of of that tech, and so. We're in the center of the universe and it's really, really exciting. And working with uh, companies like WSO2, we've got the tech at our hands to enable these things that uh, the guys have been talking about today. So for me, it's just really, really exciting times. Fantastic. Thank you, Steve. That's very optimistic of you. Um, Frederick, we'll give you the final word. Uh, what, are, what are your kind of key reflections, final remarks for the session today? Yes, yes, shortly then. Uh, I would like to buy into what Steve said earlier. These are really exciting times. Digital innovation is really on the agenda. There are plenty of solutions and opportunities available out there, both tech and, 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 and so forth. And I would like to, to sort of stress the fact that uh, uh, to be really innovative with digital solutions, try to 
challenge the obvious, challenge the existing positions, and don't be afraid to uh, try new things. Also going back to what Lord uh, Steve, um, Sebastian Coe said earlier about challenging yourself and finding new ways of doing stuff. Fantastic. Thank you very much, everybody.